Hello, hello, everybody, and this is Mastermind Monday again, and we are recording. So, we are recording for future generations and those that want to see this recording later on. And um, we're going to talk about what the futures could be like, what we like to see in the future, what science see in the future, what futurists see in the future, and uh, if we're going to be able to get to that place in the future we have designed for ourselves. There is some rocks in the road here, so we got to kind of navigate a little bit. But before that, um, I've been talking about the three-minute meditation that I do every so often, and uh, I think we should do one of those. It only takes three minutes, so... Uh, I think that'll be a good thing to do normally on Sundays, you know, we do the, uh, uh, Nori do the, uh, the other meditation, which uh, we love to do. And hopefully this is something that I do it, well, I don't know, anything from two to four times a day. And it helps to exercise the channel from the conscious mind through the subconscious mind into the universal mind. So you keep the channel open and you can get more communications possibly and uh, uh, I feel like I do anyway so uh, let's do that and uh, <clears throat> just sit down and relax and uh, just look straight ahead just <clears throat> right now, find something on the wall a spot or something and look at it And then when you have that spot or a line going up and down or something like that, cross your eyes just a little bit. So now you're looking at two spots. Now you got two spots out there and I just listen to what I say. And after a bit, you're gonna look at those two spots and then close your eyes. So now just listen to me for just a minute or so you just tell yourself my mind is still my mind is still my mind is still my body is relaxing more and more as every word you hear for every word you hear your body is relaxing more and more and more and more it goes from your from your head your shoulders your chest muscles your back muscles everything is relaxing more and more for every word you hear now you feel yourself sitting heavy in the chair and your legs are relaxed your calves are relaxed all the way down to your feet on the floor, wherever they are. You are totally relaxed and your mind is still. Close your eyes and hold them. Hold them slightly crossed because it dulls the mind and you just listen to what I say. Your mind is still. Then tell yourself, my mind is still, my mind is still. I am relaxed and my mind is still. Now let the mind go still for almost a minute and think of nothing, just say to yourself ever so often, my mind is still. My mind is still. My mind is still. My mind is still. My mind is still.
My mind is still. My mind is still and I am open for any communication from the universe, the source of all things. Any good message for the higher good and my benefit, I will receive. If there are messages from the source or the universe that I missed, I will receive it again. My mind is open to communication from source for advice, wisdom, knowledge for the good of all, and to benefit of my purpose. So then, so be it. And I thank you with gratitude for all that I have and have received and will receive. I thank you. So let's come on back. There we are. That's oh, it's probably close to four minutes. I'm sorry about that. Actually six. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, who's counting, you know? <laughs> yeah. What well, is time anyway? But exactly. Um, let's talk a little bit about the future. Uh, <clears throat> From what I see is that there are two timelines going into the future and they are very close to each other. They started not very long ago, but they are very close, very similar. And it is very critical right now that we impose and reinforce the good timeline that we have created in the past by creating, thing in, creating things in the future that we want to see. And it's very important for us now, probably more than ever, to go back and forth and visit that thing so we can solidify the timeline to that thing. We kind of pave the way to that thing that we have created in our mind. So uh, it is also very important, quit wondering what the future is going to be like. Decide what the future is going to be like. If we wonder what the future is going to be like, we leave it open for someone else with a stronger intention field than ours to create in our space and in our universe. Because the strongest intention field wins. So are we sure we want someone else to create in our timeline for us things that maybe we don't want? No. Let's decide and that stay with it and don't even ask, wonder at all what, what could happen, decide. See, 
the things that we created in the future was just a conceptual thing with many details inside of it that we probably haven't decided yet. Maybe by the time that we're done with this one, you have a little more idea of what you can possibly would want or expect. Because we have wonderful technologies out there that is ours for the taking. And the taking part of it starts with us deciding with intention and putting it in the future, in that timeline and that time-coded event that we created before. Now we can start putting details into that of things that we want. And all the way from absolutely anything to flying cars or you name it, it could be there. Uh, we need to think it into existence as we know quantum mechanics allow us to do. But there are creation going on in both timelines, even though they're very close and very similar in many, many different ways. And it appears as we are in both timelines. I prefer to let my majority um, or the strongest uh, should I say consciousness to stay in this one because I want to live this one even though it looked goofy right now it's not going to last forever we have tremendous medical technology we've been talking about the med beds and we're talking about things like that now we have another one that is coming out and that is the uh, by Kishi somewhat similar to the med beds only it's a, it's a chair in it so I guess it's some med chair but the chair can recline you kind of you know you lay down there and you receive what you decide that you want that is programmed into it and uh we're going to talk a little bit about what's in uh 2050 and i also have a uh, video that shows the technologies and some of the gadgets and the modalities that they have at that time. And uh, at least what the futurists uh, expect us to have in that video. And uh, that, that's a very interesting one. So that's gonna be put color to what I'm talking about. And uh, in 2050, medical technologies has gone a long way if somebody has got a bad heart, they just take some tissue from the person, put it in a, um, in a replicator, and you grow a new heart. It takes very short time. And then they put it back in. And the uh, same thing with eyes, somebody that, let's say you have a, an accident and you get one eye taken out, now you, you can also use a bionic eye. It's just like a camera that hooked up to the, the central nerve from the eye back into the sight center in the back of the brain and you can see just like normal. So all these things are coming. Growing new limbs are coming. And another neat thing that I know because I've seen it in the download that was a little device that you could either hang around your neck or you could hang it on your ear. And that one, I love to see this one coming because it will do away with bureaucrats. It tells you what the other person is thinking that you are close to. It picks up the brain waves, translate them into language and give it to you. Now, that one, may have some opposition by liars. Personally, I don't give a rip. I'll have, I'll have one, that'll be fine with me. But, uh, and I just found out not, oh, about a year ago that there's a company in Israel that is uh, actually brought out a, a, um, a prototype. And they say they will have it on the market. Well, they said back then that they will have it in a few years on the market. Of course, if the bureaucrats will allow it. And uh, 
transportation will be a lot simpler. There will be drones pretty much uh, transporting anything from pizza to major, major big items. And uh, big drones, small drones, you have self-driving cars, of course, we know all about that. And then we have also, right now, actually, we have self-flying airplanes. It's just that you got to have two pilots in the cockpit, but you can take off by the time you're 200 feet in the air, you put all four buttons on the autopilot forward. From there on the computer, take it, fly it up to altitude, go where you're going and pick up an instrument landing system and ILS, go all the way down and put the wheels on the ground and the pilot don't have to touch anything. We have that today in the bigger airplanes. This will be perfected to the point where uh, after a while, it's gonna be only one pilot in the cockpit. So they, it's common too. Free energy devices, yeah, there will be, uh, each house will have its own power plant and there will be a new economic system and everybody will participate it to some level. Everybody will do some kind of work except for the ones that cannot, but they will be always, always taken care of. And uh, in many homes, there will be printers that we can use for just about anything we want to, or we can have another storehouse printed for us. They have also gotten to the point where there will be printing from the quantum. With other words, the printers don't need to have any raw material put into them because they draw on it from the quantum. And that is probably even a step up from the uh, replicator on Star Trek. And I think this is something that we should look forward to. When we find or when we go and create our ideal situation, let's say a few years down the road in our mind, put those things in it, if you like them. So, so we can then have that to look for and expect and intend to happen when our time-coded event is approached and gone on to. Another thing is that the, the average lifespan will be increased an awful lot when it becomes common knowledge, what I've been talking about, reversing the aging process. But then again, in the other timeline where Sleazy Joe is, their population of the United States is probably reduced by 50% by that time. So there is stuff going on there that uh, few of us even like to think about. Well, I've talked enough, so let's run this, um, this uh, video that shows some of the technologies in color. That's gonna be a lot interest, more interesting than me. So let me do that, I'll share screen. And here we go, there we go, let's see. There we go. Okay. Oh, I gotta get the sound on. Okay, I think we should be good. Hey, if something is not working right, wave at me so I can see you. And here goes the video, it lasts for 15 minutes. From things in the air to new things for our bodies, join me as we explore 2050. What would be the future technology? We are in the year 2020, and if we're being honest with ourselves, technology is incredibly advanced, and we're making strides that can push things even farther. We have cars that are much safer than they've been in the past decade, and we're even making fully electric cars that can help save the planet. 
There are even plans for self-driving cars and even self-driving Ubers that make the future of transportation very exciting. And that's just one technology that we're growing at a fast rate. What about all the others that are out there? What will technology be as we get closer and closer to 2050? Let's start with one that well and truly could happen very soon. Drones. Wait a minute, drones are already here. And yes, they are. But more times than not, the drones you are seeing are small, piloted by people who are just trying to have some fun, or the ones that are used by the military right now for strikes and surveillance. All very fun, but in the future, drones could be an integral part of our daily lives. You've likely seen shows and people talk about how in a few years drones could be the new delivery services. Anything from pizza to Amazon packages and more. And honestly, that's very probable. Drones right now can be incredibly sophisticated, and some TV shows actually use them for sweeping and aerial shots as they film. It's very cool, but to do deliveries, they'd have to be a little bit more programmed as human error no doubt would be a very big buzzkill. Not that it's impossible right now, it's more of a question of numbers, logistics, costs, and making sure that the deliveries themselves are done in a methodical and careful manner. After all, it's bad enough when delivery people don't care enough about our packages and they just throw them onto the porch and potentially break stuff. The last thing we need is that to happen with drones. But by 2050, we may not only have drones delivering our packages, we might be looking up at the sky and seeing drones flying all over with incredible speeds and accuracy. And they potentially could be all run by AI. The potential is there, and by that point, various upgrades to drones and their programming will no doubt make them all the more efficient, durable, and quick. And potentially, they could go beyond basic deliveries for people and do emergency work. Imagine a drone taking a vital piece of medical material to a hospital to ensure it doesn't get stuck in traffic, or helping watch over an important convoy to let people know on the ground if there's trouble. There are many ways that drones could affect our world. The only question is, will we let them by 2050? Let's keep going with transportation, shall we? Right now, one of the biggest ways to get around the countries we live in are trains. Trains ferry people and all sorts of cargo around in an efficient and reliable manner, which is why they've been in use for hundreds of years. But if we're being honest here, while trains are efficient and reliable in certain ways, they aren't exactly fast, especially when it comes to passenger and freight trains. They can take a long time to get to their destination, and at times, it's more logical to take other modes of transportation which is why companies are making special kinds of trains that can go much faster. You know of the magnetic trains of Japan, no doubt, but others like the Virgin Hyperloop are trying to push things even farther. Passengers or cargo are loaded into the Hyperloop vehicle and accelerate gradually via electric propulsion through a low-pressure tube. The vehicle floats above the track using magnetic levitation and glides at airline speeds for long distances due to ultra-low aerodynamic drag. Science fiction? Hardly. In fact, the first vehicle of the Hyperloop has already been tested and proven, and some larger tests are being scheduled for the next few years. Sorry about that, there's a commercial here. And if this works, traveling across the country will be much faster. How much faster? The Hyperloop aims to send people shooting across the tubes that they make at a rate of about 600 miles per hour. Which means if they were able to do this across the entire United States from east to west, or vice versa, you could travel across the whole country in about five hours, give or take considering it would take much longer for a regular train ride or car ride, that's a big improvement. And they're planning to do this with not just people, but cargo. Imagine being able to ship something in the morning on the west coast to the east coast and know it will get there before the day ends. That is quite impressive. Plus, the tubes would be built underground as to not disturb wildlife, and they will go and make it in a way where there are no carbon emissions. So they're fast, they're reliable, and they won't harm the planet. Seems like a win all around. Of course, you do have to wonder what it would be like to be on a 600 mile per hour train thing, but hey, we'll just find out soon. And by 2050, this could be one of the main modes of transportation around the world. Before we show off even more technologies we could have by 2050, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. 
That way you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Okay, we've had some fun ones, but now let's go deeper down the rabbit hole and talk about the ones we all fear. AI. Yep, artificial intelligence. And no matter what way you look at it, people are seriously trying to make it happen, and make it happen soon. AIs are literally everywhere, including in your cars, and in your homes via devices like Alexa, which are indeed forms of AI. And there are things like Watson that is so smart that it could beat two Jeopardy legends. So by 2050, AI could be so advanced that our cultures, our world, could literally be run by them in a logistical and computing sense, or in a Terminator humans are obsolete sense. And believe it or not, we're closer to that than you might think. Google's deep mind isn't there yet, but really I'm sure they'll probably discover those things along the way. And by 2020, it's possible their computer could be superhuman and could be conscious, Pearson has said. That could be the beginning of the end, really. Is Judgment Day inevitable? Maybe, maybe not. It just depends on how far we go with AI and how much we're able to control it, or if we can't fully control it once they reach certain levels of intelligence. Of course, for all of our worries about AI, there is a chance it could be all fine. Imagine if the lighter side of sci-fi comes through in regards to AI, and we get a bright future powered by AI. Think about it. What if by 2050 we each get our own unique AI? We could customize how they sound, how they look, and basically have a BFF that'll help us out in life in various ways. Remind us of things like Alexa, guide us in homework and fields of study, be a being that we can bounce ideas off of, etc. If that form of AI came through, then by 2050, we could live in a utopia where AI helps us be better. Sorry about that, I don't know how to shut them off. Until they revolt and we have iRobot going on. But hey, let's not dwell on our potential doom. Let's show off another technology that many people are hoping for. Space travel. Yeah, when you think about the decade we're in right now, the 2020s, the biggest goal of the world by far is to get to Mars and possibly beyond it. But it's not just about landing there. Though that would and will be a crowning achievement for humanity in the decade and in recent times. More importantly than just landing there, though, is the ability to start setting up the first human colony on another planet. We've been to the moon many times, but we haven't tried to live there for various reasons. Mars seems to be the place where many feel we can go in order to live amongst the stars, and many speculate that by 2030 at the latest, barring setbacks, accidents, and other things obviously, we could not only be colonizing Mars, but having regular shuttles go there, so that people can see the red planet for themselves. We will see first people going off to Mars, and then robots will do some basic stuff, like making basic materials on Mars, Pearson said. We're going to have to do that because only so much can be brought into space. Of course, there are numerous things that need to be worked out before such a thing could happen. But we have top men on this, including Elon Musk and the SpaceX program, Jeff Bezos via his Blue Origin company and more. Each of them, and NASA among others, are working on not just getting us back into space, but getting us there via cheaper, smaller, and reusable spacecraft. Something that honestly has been a setback for the space program over the last 20 years. But if we are able to do it, if we are able to get to Mars, get there faster, and be able to colonize it, then by 2050, who knows where we will be? We could have multiple colonies on Mars, maybe some on the Moon, and maybe even colonies on moons like Titan and Europa, which some think could be even better places to colonize than Mars. It's possible, but obviously Mars is the place that we are aiming for right now. With each step into space, humanity grows larger in the universe, and who knows just how many of us will be out there by 2050. All right, now let's dive into something really sci-fi, prosthetics. Yeah, I know that right now prosthetics are very limited and at times a bit pointless, but if we were able to fully utilize computer technology to its fullest and make prosthetics that are fully compatible with the human brain and body, then the sky is the limit. We could enter an age where cyborgs are not just welcome, they're commonplace. And yeah, it may seem like we're far away from that, but we are getting closer to that point. James Young, a 25-year-old biological scientist, has a prosthetic arm with a personal drone and built-in flashlight. And a French artist is using a prosthetic that doubles as a tattoo gun. 
That's pretty cool. Imagine if a police officer loses an arm in the line of duty. Usually that would mean the end of his career. But with an advanced prosthetic, he could literally be better than ever if it were advanced enough. The biggest problem with these fake limbs is that most of them are plastic, meant to convey that the arm or leg is still there and thus still usable. The bridge to cybernetic implants lies in the brain. Being able to use the computer tech to sync with the brain and give accurate commands. We haven't fully bridged that gap yet, but when we do, dang, life is going to get a lot more interesting. And don't forget, these prosthetics could be used in many ways other than helping people with lost limbs. They could be put onto other objects, or potentially even be worn as exoskeletons when needed. Think of it like Jax from Mortal Kombat. Some people could even ask for implants to be put into their arms or legs to give them an extra boost, like TJ Combo from Killer Instinct. 1. I like video games, and they have plenty of cybernetic people. The point is, by 2050, if these things are made, a lot of people won't feel broken or weak anymore because they've lost limbs or the abilities of their arms or legs. They'll be whole again and be able to do things just like they were before, if not better. And that's a future we should definitely be trying to live for. Now let's go to something a bit more unique. Look at yourself right now. Specifically, look at the clothes you are wearing right now. What are they made of? What do they feel like? What do they look like? Of all of these answers, I bet none of them are, they look like they could give me superpowers, because they can't. Not yet, anyway. Think about it like this. What if the clothes you were wearing right now felt the same, looked the same, but could do more? With the growth of nanotechnology, your clothes could potentially be embodied with various materials or technologies that help you improve your strength, durability, and more. For example, what if you had a shirt on that was light as a feather, but could absorb impacts and leave you with no injuries? That would be pretty impressive and important, especially in this age of gun violence we live in. Or what if the uniforms of firefighters made them completely heat-resistant and burn-proof, further ensuring that they are able to do their jobs without much risk to their lives? The technologies that we can put into clothes is out there, and some people are working on it right now, both in terms of multiple functions, but also cosmetic appeal. Imagine if by 2050 we have the ability to craft whatever kinds of clothes we want, and even select what kind of abilities they have. Imagine you wear a special kind of top that has a special pattern on it, and when you press a button or say a keyword, that pattern unfolds and suddenly you have wings on your outfit. Wouldn't that be cool? If done right, this could be the newest wave of fashion and style in the future. See, the future is hip. I'm sure that last one left you drooling, so let's temper your expectations and talk about school. Yes, it sucks, and learning can be a chore, but in the future, it may be a lot more interactive. Over the last decade or so, computers in schools have been a must-have for various courses. But if the advent of virtual reality simulations come through as many expect them to, it could lead to all sorts of innovations in the classrooms that could help kids with what's going on. You could take students to an environment in the past and show them what was happening, like watching a battle taking place, Pearson said. You can explain that sort of thing more easily if they can see it happening than if you are looking at a textbook. Oh yeah, history and geography classes would be much more fun, that's for sure. Or imagine an audiobook, but instead of just an audio, you can see the characters coming to life before your eyes, and you watch them interact with others. Heck, school plays could have projected environments to make things seem more real. And of course, you could have virtual tutors to help you with problems that the teachers aren't able to help with. Education is definitely something that can benefit from advanced technologies, and by 2050, our school systems could be so revolutionized that you have to try really hard to fail class. Though I'm sure some of you would still try. Finally, let's talk about something that I'm sure you'll be horrified to hear. In the future, you likely won't need a phone. I know you're stunned, but think about it. Right now, smartphones are becoming more and more advanced every single year. New features, new programs, etc. 
But by 2050, your phone won't likely need to exist because you'll have access to it and more by something else. What exactly? That depends on the technology. But for this example, let's imagine a wrist gauntlet. Instead of typing up a number, you simply have to say call mom. But obviously, the gauntlet could do much more than that. It'll likely have a holographic screen that you can use to look up information on a much bigger keyboard. And depending on what sci-fi future you believe we'll have, it'll have things that can scan objects, detect dangers, warn you about upcoming problems, and may even have an AI companion. So yeah, your phones are important right now, but in the future, more than likely not. Thanks for watching, everyone. What do you think of this look at the future and what it might entail? Can you guess which of these things we'll actually have in 2050? What thing do you personally want to have now and not later? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel. Well, that should give us a little bit of an idea, would it? Oops. There we go. Sorry about that. Yeah. Anybody have any comments on that one? Seems a little outdated. Seem what? Seems a little outdated. Yeah. That could be because there is so much technology that has been denied us. And that technology should be here now. So the technology is 30 years from now, that should be building on what they have denied us, which will bring us even further ahead in technology. Yeah, it's amazing what one year since that came out yeah. is the differences with our thinking now compared to what they were talking about there. Yeah. I got one thing that I came away with and that is uh, actually a thought that I probably got in the middle of it. And that is that there will be, and the pairs also as I, I've seen it, that there'll be two classes of people. The ones that is willing to take a, a chip, a mine chip that will give them total access to everything on the internet and then the ones that don't or doesn't. So the, one, the ones that doesn't want to have that brain enhancement, they will compare to the ones that take the brain enhancement chip. Many of us that won't take that, we are gonna be looking like imbeciles compared to the ones that take the chip. However, the internet can be your best friend and it can be your worst enemy. Yes. So who's going to look like the imbecile spouting off Wikipedia, which is a bunch of crap yeah. and, you know, saying that, oh, this is, this is true where we have the hands on, we're seeing it firsthand. No, this is not true. Oh, but I can see it in, on the internet. It's true. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not. I can see it in front of me. So you got to weigh the pros and cons there. Your best friend or your worst enemy? Which, which do you want? That's a very good point because what is out there now, half of it is lies and we don't know which one is the half that is the lies. Mm -hmm. If yeah. we stay with our own mind, we should be able to use discernment to a much greater degree than otherwise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard that they took the um, person behind Wikipedia uh, under arrest. They've stepped down from their top position. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't All doubt right. that. I wouldn't doubt that. <laughs> oh, that is excellent. I love it. Yeah. They should spend I, do while they're at it. <laughs> who else? Uh, what was it? The... Um, Oh, the prime minister or president or whatever of Italy has been arrested. 
Was it Italy or Spain? I, I don't think know. It was Italy. Probably. Italy? Yeah. yeah. He's he's gone. It's and France awful. as well. France, yes. Yeah. Marcon yeah. was arrested? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. There is a God after all. I know. <laughs> and the, uh, and I the mean, guy, remember the other guy, Sarkozy? Mm -hmm. Remember him? Yeah, yeah, he just got three yeah. years. He got three years in prison. Oh, oh. is that it? Um, was it? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we're handing the world somebody on a silver platter. Yeah. We're saying, oh, come and arrest this guy. In Canada, it is more legal to be a, uh, gosh, I don't want to say the P word, uh, pizza. There, there's your keyword right there. Yeah. Um, if you, if you are, if you have a problem with somebody hurting your child, then you're the one that gets investigated, and the person hurting your child. Oh, there's nothing wrong. We can't prove it because the police weren't there to see that person hurting your child. Yeah. So we're saying, oh my God, we've got this guy. We know where he is. He doesn't come out of his basement more than 15 minutes a day. He's wearing an ankle bracelet. You know, the guy that's living in Sussex Drive with the beard, go get him. <laughs> no, they won't go get him. Yeah. Anyway, that's oh, I'm getting on. I'm getting all wound up again. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Patience, patience. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I was just telling somebody a couple minutes ago. Oh, that's okay. I'm a very patient person. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm going stir crazy. Yeah. It's March first, and I still have no job. I still, you know, I still have nothing. Yeah. You know, Augie, you were talking about. Uh, uh, some of the technologies, um, a lot of these videos and all, they, they pro they're they making projections uh, a lot of times based on kind of our normal pace of advancement. But we have about 8,000 suppressed patents. And when the cabal is finally finished, they're going to release those 8,000 patents. And I think we're going to have kind of a technological revolution. Yeah. And then that's just the that's just all the suppressed technologies. Then when the galactics come on the scene, they're going to be sharing some of their technologies on top of that. And that's going to really accelerate things. So I think we're going to be going at a super fast pace. You were talking about the technology that uh, reads your mind, reads your uh, thoughts of your mind. Yeah. Well, I remember Corey Good said you know, when he's taken out a body or, or taken on these trips, that he interacts with these various galactic beings and they have what's called glass pads. And these glass pads give you access to information like a laptop. They just kind of float, they levitate, but they're controlled completely by your mind. So when you, whatever you want to bring up, it, it reads your, your thoughts and then it projects it right in front of you. So it's kind of like, there's no need to have the chip in your, brain you're talking about because if we just wait long enough the technology will come to where the device itself will pick up our thoughts and we can just project what we want to see and it'll be right in front of us yeah yeah so, joe joe dispensio said that uh, we can project whatever we think and depending on our emotions that we put into it where they comes soon or whether it comes later, you know? So I'm thinking that the best thing that we can try to do right now is to strive to survive, to get to the other side and what we need to do, you know? Yeah. Because the old got to go before the new can come in. Mm -hmm. And in the... In the process of doing that, it's very important, probably more so now than ever, for us to visualize that good thing in the future that we want to happen. It's got to be out there, fill it with detail, 
emotion, intention, and gratitude for already having it. That's the universal language. So now it is important for us to keep doing that because those timelines are so close, we could shift one into the other one and get stuck in the one with, um, you know, what's his name. And that is not a good one because I see also the raising, also population. Raising, yeah. Also raising your vibration, I think is key to staying on that higher, the, yeah. you know, the timeline that you want to, what we want to go on. Yeah. So oh, that means, absolutely, absolutely right. You're absolutely that, right. That means um, watching what we think, what we say, the food we eat, staying grounded to Mother Earth, uh, meditation, all these things kind of help raise our vibration. Mm -hmm. We need to keep doing that. And yep. crystals. Having crystals near yeah. your auric field will also raise your vibration. Yeah. 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 I forgot about it. I'm, I'm glad you reminded me of that. Yeah. Mahogany, mahogany obsidian. I've got black tourmaline there. I've got my rose quartz. <laughs> yep. I've got my intention. Some of you got the, my uh, intention. There you go. <laughs> you know, the, uh, I'm just Have you heard of those, uh, the Andorra crystals? These are the crystals that the Palladians used a lot, and they were, um, or the, uh, I mean, the Atlanteans. The Atlanteans used these uh, Andorra crystals. They're very high vibration, and you can right. find them. You can buy them on the internet. They're different. They look almost like glass, but they're different colors. Hmm. And they're usually hmm. found in... Um, uh, the Sahara Madre area, mountainous area, and they're found also um, uh, someplace overseas. I can't remember. They're where they're more prevalent anyway. Mm -hmm. you know, they have to mine them and break them up. Yeah, those crystals are um, amazingly more important than we think because there are scientists that are saying that they display some of the quality, qualities of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Yeah, in fact, yeah. Uh, the, the Atlanteans were far more advanced when it comes to crystal technology than we yeah. than we have been up to now. They used it for, they used crystal technology for storing information. They used it for healing. They used it for generating uh, energy from one like pyramid crystal to another. They could transmit energy using crystal technology. And uh, they used it for all kinds of things. Yeah, I understand that crystals is like uh, humans. Um, each crystal is different according to uh, its make. S some can do different things, just like we do different things and have different attributes. Mm -hmm. So um, we call yeah. for that. We call for that what we need. And uh, from my understanding, the crystal is in tune once we raise our vibrations to that level. And it draws us to each other. And, yep. uh, and trees. I always find it's a great, uh, yesterday, I mean, I, before Nori started her, her part of the meditation, um, you know, she, I drew a tree with a hand in front of it. We need to be connected to our trees. <laughs> I know it mm -hmm. sounds kind of crazy, but if we no, are connected to our trees, yeah, then, true. then, you know, the tree is our lungs and also, did you notice that your thumbprint, if you cut a tree completely straight, you look at the rungs, the, the rings on a tree looks like a thumbprint. Mm -hmm. right. So yeah. we're, we're more earth than, than people let on. We're not technology. We are earth. We are earthbound yeah. creatures. Yeah. So this true. tech, and, the, and this is why I think all this technology is harming us. If we yeah. would just... Number one, get rid of money, get rid of all forms of currency, get rid of it all. And then we would slowly allow Mother Earth to nurture us back into health, the health that we exactly. deserve. Yep. We don't need, we don't need lights. We have a light up in the sky, you know. <laughs> we don't need microwaves because we can rub two sticks together and make a fire cook cook our meat you know there, there's certain animals put on this earth specifically to feed us you know so sorry vegans but yes they are that's that's their role in life we don't need this technology and and it's it's kind of it's irritating me can you tell yeah 
Yeah, the other thing about crystals is that crystals are sentient. Sentient crystals beings. Crystals are sentient. Yes, they are. I agree. I agree. And so if you, know, take a, if you take a crystal that's new to you, you put it right on your third eye and you sit there and you wait. What's the first, one of the first feelings you're going to get is that, um, that ice cream headache. So it's going to, what it's doing is it's now calibrating to your brain and, mm -hmm. and every single crystal that I have, I'll put it right on my third eye. And as soon as it stops hurting, then I know this is now my crystal. Now it's part of me. And this, mm -hmm. this is why they work so well for me is because I've calibrated them to me. And of course, there, there is the famous uh, crystal skulls. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That actually makes my teeth think, thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Aren't but, there 13 of them? How many skulls are out there? Well, there's supposed to be a famous one that goes back to Atlantis, but I don't know. Uh, I think it was called Max. Max was the, one of the famous crystal skulls. It's supposedly the Atlanteans stored all their history in, in the, one of the uh, crystal skulls. And if you know how to access it, you can restore all that information. But I thought there was more than one. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Yeah, there is, there is. Yeah, the technology we just saw, you know, it can be somewhat alarming, some of it, but it sure would be fun to have one of those holographic wristwatches. Though. You just push the button and it does <laughs> start up oh. and you use it as a computer yeah. screen right there. Yeah. <laughs> no. Now, what about water technology? I mean, water technology? Yeah, I mean, we're having, I mean, water has memory. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, yeah, it does. It has consciousness. Yeah. It's going to be part of our future, I believe, because I believe the Atlanteans probably had a lot of that technology along with their crystals. Yes. Yeah. Water, water, like we put water it into our also. bodies and it goes right through. And then as soon as we uh, expel that water, it goes into the ground. Mother Earth takes care of it and then we can ingest it again. It's, mm -hmm. it's yeah. just like constantly um, keeping, keeping the battery primed, I guess. Keep the pump primed. Yeah. The water is also conscious. Yes. 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 And, there's, and there's certain metals in there that we need to keep our battery running. Like the, 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 the magnesium and, and the calcium and all that stuff. We, we need all that stuff to just to keep the battery running. That's true. Yeah. Well, we've been here for an hour, so... Uh... I would say for the ones that uh, would like to join us for uh, watching this recording now, uh, which gonna join us, join us for one of these sessions, just send us an email to the mastermindconnection at gmail.com. I will get you some information so you can come and join us for these free sessions. Sometimes it gets rather fun. Mm -hmm. So let's do this again on Wednesday night, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, well, Linda. Yes. Well, find something Seek interesting to talk about. Secret from anxiety and <laughs> okay. no. Do not put a diaper on my face. Yeah. <laughs> hey, have Can a great. Yes. Yeah. You know, I was wondering. It seems it... with the technology, there's always a downside to it that you can't have technology and all be positive. For example. Talking about that watch, I would never wear a watch on my body. I don't want to be anywhere near any of this technology, whether it be a cell phone, a watch on me. So hmm. is there any way to get technology that does not have a downside to it? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I yeah think that's we're, a good thought. I think we're moving in that direction. In fact, a yeah. lot of the galactics technology is sentient technology and it will not do anything that's harmful yeah and uh, we we haven't developed that yet but i think they'll share it with us so that that way no technology can be can be built that's going to be harmful to mankind it's it's like a spiritual type of technology yeah right, right. Uh, yeah because see now we're getting into 5g you know, and this seems to be the answer from, you know, Western civilization, you know, we're advancing, but in my mind, 
there's always a downside to this convenience. Yeah, there's going to be some corrections made, uh, I think, uh, so where we can have advanced technologies, but they're going to be safe and they're going to be like, take uh, Keshi. He has a technology that can power your house, but at the same, it's like a free energy device, but at the same time, while you're living in your house, the energies are producing beneficial energies to make your body healthy. Yeah. So it's choosing, it's choosing the right frequencies of the technologies that are going to make you healthy. And the cabal, of course, when they develop technologies, they're just choosing frequencies that are harmful to our bodies. Right. Mm -hmm. We just got to change this, the frequency. Yeah. I know this Keisha technology is working because I have a friend over in Germany, Klaus over there. He's got one of the free energy devices that uh, Keisha created. Uh, I'm calling it free energy because of a lack, lack of a better term, but they get cold in Germany and not this winter, but the one before last, I mean, last year, he did not use his heater and it was nice and warm in the house. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So yeah, I know yeah. this technology put out uh, beneficial uh, frequencies for your body as well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I don't think big corporations today think about the health aspect of it. All they think about is the dollars. That's yeah. exactly right. It's all about the money. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's right. And that's why they got to go before the new can come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Got, that's why, I, got, that's why I've, I've been saying for, gosh, well over 20 years, if we want to solve the world's problems, eliminate money. That's how you solve the world's problems. So. Yeah. Anyway, I gotta go. Well, if you think about right. see the corporations, right. yeah, go ahead. Okay. Have a great night, everybody. Okay. Bye. Peace Bye. and love. Good night. Bye.